You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the guns, the drugs, the modulation of the Hey yo, welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 14th of June 99. It's the night after Great American Bash and this week Nitro takes place in Washington DC while Raw comes from Worcester Mass. The Great American Bash, <laughs> yeah it wasn't good. It made me want a Great American Bash my head in but as far as I can tell Ric Flair is still president of WCW while Kevin Nash is still world heavyweight champion. Sid Vicious is back in WCW, it's kick or be kicking folks. So let's check out the first hour of Nitro and let's see how far we can rot our brains before going unconscious. We kick things off with Vincent and Brian Adams taking on Kurt Hennig and Barry Windham. Bobby D's also here with Windham and Hennig and we're still waiting for the extra lyrics to get placed on Kurt Hennig's new entrance music. He's definitely embracing this whole rap is crap thing and I'm here for it. You gotta take what you can get these days when it comes to Nitro. After getting thrown across the ring, Brian Adams decided to smash Kurt's balls into the ring post and his reaction afterwards was great. Barry Windham, wearing yellow work gloves and some tiny Daisy Duke cut off jeans, ended up getting taught a wrestling lesson from Vincent somehow but Ilaria put Vincent in his place and Kurt made him pay after getting tagged in. Looks like Vincent owed Kurt some money. Bobby D lent his teammates a little hand on the outside before Henny kicked Vincent square in the balls. The referee was like good job Kurt, do it again. But when Wyndham tagged in, Vincent once again proved that he's got Barry's number. Never has Vincent been so good inside a WCW wrestling ring. Wyndham had to resort to using a bull rope and the team of Kurt Hennig and Barry Wyndham win via pinfall. The NWO strangely wrestled this match as babyfaces and still they were unable to overcome this new team that's taken WCW by storm. WCW held a press conference for Master Percy, Mean Gene Okerlund, Eric Bischoff, Conan, Rey Mysterio and Master P's bodyguard Swole were in attendance and Percy said he grew up on wrestling, music and wrestling go hand in hand, all that nonsense. Mysterio thanks Percy for the message he sends through his music, Bischoff's all excited about the positive impact the No Limit Soldiers can have on WCW and Big Swole wondered where he was and exactly how he got here. The macho man Randy Savage then comes to the ring with Team Madness and Savage says he's the uncrowned heavyweight champion. He reenacts what happened at the Great American Bash by having Gorgeous George play the role of Kevin Nash and Macho says he pinned Kev for the 1-2-3. Not exactly what happened but Tony Schiavone appreciated the visual. Macho says he's got one word for Kevin Nash and that's vicious. Macho's gonna get vicious and Kevin Nash's career is gonna be over. Savage also says the wolf pack sucks before leaving the ring and that's how it ends. We will hear from Nash later on and Sid will make an appearance in the arena too. Our number one ends with a Billy Kidman vs Hugh Morris match. Morris dominated this one in the early going and Kidman sold like a champ for the big man. Jimmy Hart felt Morris needed a bit more help though so a chair got introduced to the match and Kidman got dropped on that chair when it got set up inside the ring. But Morris made the mistake of trying to powerbomb Kidman and that's always a bad move. Kidman wins after performing the shooting star press. We've got a Ric Flair and Roddy Piper promo next on Nitro, Raw begins with a corporate ministry promo. Stone Cold Steve Austin's at WWF headquarters today and he's got a bunch of workmen on standby outside the building. He then listens to the receptionist answer the phone and he's not too impressed with her phone etiquette, so Stone Cold shows her how she's supposed to answer the phone before heading to his office. 
We'll check in with Stone Cold a little later, but Vince McMahon obviously isn't too happy with Austin being in this powerful corporate position. McMahon's upset that all his scheming over the past few months was for nothing, but he also says the corporate ministry isn't prepared to dissolve and the faction is instead looking to the future. Both Vince and Shane are eagerly anticipating their match against Austin at the King of the Ring, but McMahon wants to add a stipulation to that match and he has a few suggestions. First, he pitches a dog pound match, but before agreeing to this kind of bout, he wants to see one take place tonight on Raw. So, Road Dog's gonna face Billy Gunn in the Raw opener, and it's gonna be a dog pound match. Shane McMahon sees the King of the Ring match as a case of David versus Goliath. The McMahons are obviously Goliath. So tonight the Boy Wonder wants to see that reenacted when X-Pac takes on Big Show. He also wants to see Farouk and Bradshaw take on the roles of Vince and Shane when they go up against Kane tonight in a handicap match. And Vince then thinks about booking a blindfold match for the King of the Ring, so tonight he wants to see how that would play out when Tess takes on the Big Boss Man. Boss Man will have perfect 2020 vision while Tess gets blindfolded. How about a straitjacket match? Well, tonight Ken Shamrock will be put in a straitjacket for a non-title bout against Jeff Jarrett. And before Vince can book any more matches for Raw tonight, the Stooges walk out and Patterson wants to know how Vince could put his daughter through such an ordeal when she got kidnapped by The Undertaker. Patterson reveals here that he's Stephanie's godfather and that's why he's so concerned. Briscoe tells Vince and Shane that they can go to hell and on the way there Vince will have to get his own damn coffee. And so Vince ends up booking Patterson and Briscoe in a tag team match against Midian and Viscera. Quick word of warning, most of these matches either don't happen tonight or they're about 2 minutes long. We're gonna have to double up quite a bit this week on our head to heads. On Nitro, we might get some answers in regards to what happened last night during the Flair vs Piper match. Rick tells some chubby kid in the front row to shut up or his mum will get a ride on Space Mountain. And Rick also says right here that he's still president of WCW. Rick wants Piper to come out and accept his new job as vice president of the company. So here comes the hot rod, flanked by a bunch of bagpipe players or bagpipers, pipers, whatever. Roddy accepts his new role, he's now aligned himself with Ric Flair. He says he'll uphold the office just like the White House does in DC, where the DC stands for Don't Confess. He swears in Bill Clinton's name that he'll make all the mid-carters in the back very happy. All those young guys who wanted a break needn't worry. Piper and Flair have a laugh, with Piper wondering if he'd become president if something bad were to happen to Rick. Not sure if this is foreshadowing, and I wouldn't bet money on it either, seeing this is WCW after all. But Dean Malenko marches out next and he says, if a guy waking up from a 15 year coma were to turn on Monday Nitro today, he'd think time never elapsed looking at Flair and Piper. Malenko's tired of being held down, he's speaking for Mysterio, Kidman, Bagwell, Benoit, Saturn and everyone else in the back who can't catch a break. It's time for Rick to show that class he's always talking about and it's time for Rick to step down. Dean isn't asking for the torch to be passed, he says the young cats are gonna take it. Malenko then wants to know where Arn Anderson stands on all this and the enforcer confirms he's staying with Ric Flair. Arn says you're either a horseman or you're a casualty of the horseman. Piper then tries to interject and Malenko pushes him away. So Dino Machino gets jumped by all three men and he ends up getting saved by none other than Buff Daddy, the man who Piper swerved last night at the pay per view. Backstage, Benoit and Saturn try to rush out to help Bagwell and Malenko, but they too get jumped by the Jersey Triad. So it all ends with the babyfaces taking a beating, and now we know where Roddy Piper stands in this seemingly never ending storyline. Steve Austin enters his new office and he notices that Mr. McMahon has three female assistants. Imagine that. One gets McMahon his coffee, the other gets his Chateaubriand, which Austin mistakes as a wine, and the third lady provides backup for the other two. When asked if he wants a coffee, Austin says he'll take a beer. When asked if he wants something to eat, he says he'll take another beer. And when advised he has an upcoming board meeting, Steve Austin says he doesn't like board games. Let's just cover the majority of these clips now so we aren't going back and forth. Austin goes to his board meeting where he hands out a Steve Austin magazine to staff, claiming it's the company's new orientation manual. He then fires the head of market research for looking stupid while promoting a mailroom clerk as his own personal beer distributor. And Stone Cold then gives the head of IT a hard time and you can see this guy's legitimately nervous about being on TV. 
Austin then passes out beers to everyone sitting at the table. He promises to come back soon and whoever's still standing will keep their jobs at WWF headquarters. Anyone who passes out's gonna get fired. Austin then visits the HR department and he tells Sarah to use her resources to get old Stone Cold a few cold beers. And Austin then gets Matt DeLuca, senior vice president of HR and facilities, to say the word ass with a little bass in his voice. When DeLuca shows a bit of fire, Austin gets Matt to show him where the accounting department is in this giant building. And when Stone Cold arrives, he wants to look at some books, some books with numbers in them. The accountant points out the losses WWF's incurred thanks to Stone Cold shenanigans. And when Austin sees how much Vince McMahon's making, he wants a few zeros taken off and moved over to Mick Foley's salary, seeing as Foley needs a little help with his medical bills. Shane McMahon's salary also gets cut off and it becomes the new beer budget. And we'll come back to Stone Cold towards the end of the show. The final segment leads to an in-ring Vince McMahon promo. Road Dog vs Billy Gunn in a dog collar match on Nitro, Scott Norton vs Ernest Miller. WCW can go fuck themselves if they think I'm watching another Norton vs Ernest Miller match, but what's interesting about this one is the fact that Eric Bischoff, on commentary, gave Jim Ross a little flag for calling every kick in wrestling a savat kick while also correcting Shivani's call. Bischoff said Miller tried a crescent kick, which may be correct, but here's the thing Eric, no one cares, no one fucking cares mate. Sonny Ono used a crowbar on Norton and Miller used his illegal shoe when performing a standing sidekick because footwear is totally not allowed in a wrestling ring. The commentators continued to make jokes about savat kicks at the end of the match and I pray this is the end of this Norton vs Miller nonsense because it's going nowhere no matter who wins. On Raw, Mr. Ass I'm a nice man is wearing a neck brace so he's clearly trying to get out of this dog pound match, which by the way looks like a standard dog chain match. Road Dog makes Billy move a little faster when he pretends Kane's coming for him, so Tim White removes the neck brace and Billy has no choice but to wrestle this match. Still, Billy refuses to wear the dog collar and instead he blindsides the Road Dog before launching an all out attack. The referee also starts counting a pin attempt by Billy, so Tim White doesn't seem to care if Badass wears the dog collar or not. But Road Dog comes back with his dancey punch and he wraps the chain around his fist for the final blow. China, who meets Road Dog at the King of the Ring next week, runs down to assist Billy. She uses the chain to smash James's doggy balls, which in turn sets Road Dog up perfectly for a finisher. Billy gets the win via pinfall. China and Billy continue beating Road Dog up after the final bell, so Road Dog is going to have to get his act together if he wants to win this King of the Ring tournament coming soon on pay per view. Kinda odd seeing Billy Gunn and China together again though, seeing as Billy is not a member of the corporate ministry, but there you have it. Ken Shamrock arrives to the building and Sergeant Slaughter's arranged a police escort for Vince McMahon's protection. Shamrock says if these boys aren't here to arrest them, they should probably leave because they're going to end up getting hurt. Strong words, Kenny boy. Strong words. Disco fever! Yeah, yeah! The Rock cuts a promo next on Raw. On Nitro, it's Disco Inferno vs Van Hammer. If we look at how Disco's been booked since beginning reliving the war, it's easy to tell that this is a match he's gonna lose. Not only is Van Hammer on a winning streak, but anytime Disco gets a sniff of pay per view ring time, or if he's put in a somewhat notable storyline, he always comes out of it by wrestling a mid card guy, and that mid card guy always goes over. It happens every single time. Things went downhill for Disco after taking a spine buster followed by a big boot. Things got even worse when a spinning neckbreaker got botched and I've seen this clip getting used as a gotcha against Disco on Twitter, even though it was Van Hammer who hit the mat way too early. The Inferno then hits his second rope elbow drop, he lines up a chart buster but he ends up getting thrown into the referee, and when Disco tries to wake Scott Dickinson up, he ends up taking a back suplex. Von Hammer beats Disco with a back suplex and a handful of tights to be fair, but still a back suplex. 
Disco gives Dickinson a chart buster after the final bell as Van Hammer's road to the world title continues, and Eric Bischoff then reveals that Dennis Rodman's gonna return to WCW very soon, I can hardly contain my excitement. Bischoff also said during the match that he talked to Bret Hart recently, Bret's been through a lot and so has the whole Hart family, but Eric says he expects Bret to return to WCW television very very soon. On Raw, The Rock issues a challenge to The Undertaker for the King of the Ring pay-per-view. The Undertaker rolling his eyes into the back of his head doesn't impress the Great One, and if Taker wants to impress Rock, he should go one-on-one -on -one with the People's Champ in Greensboro. Rock then says this. Instead, Undertaker, of taking your eyes and rolling them up into the back of your head, The Rock says, take your entire 33-pound head, turn it backwards like The Exorcist, have it roll down your back, catch it with both your hands, and then Undertaker, The Rock says, take your own head and proceed to shove it directly up your candy ass! What? Man. The Undertaker shows up and he says, and I quote, he's crippled more people than polio. My god. Undertaker says it's time for Rock to go to the learning tree, and The Undertaker accepts this match at the King of the Ring. Vince McMahon then shows up wondering why Rock thinks he's worthy of being number one contender. If Rock wants to face The Undertaker for the WWF Championship, then he's gonna have to beat the champ in a non-title match tonight on Raw. Rocky accepts, and Shane then reveals that there's gonna be a special stipulation added to this matchup. That stipulation is gonna be revealed to the fans and to Rocky five minutes before bell time. On Raw, it's Debra vs Ivory and Tess vs The Big Boss Man. On Nitro, Fit Finley vs Complete Tit Brand Knobs. The majority of our Nitro match took place on the outside, with Finley using the ring post and ring steps to do some damage to Mr. Knobs. Brand was able to drop Fit across the guardrail, and when we get back inside the ring, Brand showed his technical abilities by sticking his armpit in Finley's face. Finley fights back, but he falls victim to a power slam. Jimmy Hart gets in a few cheap shots on the outside. When Finley gets inside the ropes, he ends up running into the ring post, and Knobs tells Jimmy to get a chair. It's Brian who ends up getting whacked here after Jimmy and Finley struggle for a bit, and Hardcore Hack makes sure Brian doesn't win this match by surprising Nobs with his massive kendo stick. The greatest rivalry in WCW history continues on. After Finley gets a pinfall win, we see Sable sitting in the audience. That's right, Sable's on WCW Nitro, but she hasn't signed a WCW contract. She doesn't end up signing a contract either, and she's just here to prove something to WWF. So I say why the hell not, she's free to do whatever she wants. The thing is, Sable's WWF contract didn't officially end until 2001, or rather she couldn't work for another wrestling company until 2001, and on top of that, she did an interview with TV Guide magazine saying she no longer wanted to be involved in wrestling due to it being too vulgar and too obscene. That issue of TV Guide went on sale the very day that Sable showed up on Monday Nitro. Also, for what it's worth, Kevin Nash was the one responsible for bringing Sable in to sit in the audience. Sable said she bought a ticket like everyone else, but she had to say this for legal reasons. On Raw, the women's match was extremely short and also pretty bad. Debra and Ivory pull each other's hair and they try to pull at each other's clothing. Debra then takes a few snapmares while getting choked with Ivory's scarf. And when Debra tries to use that scarf, Nicole baskets in the ring and she chokes Debra out. Double J, for some reason, distracts the referee right here. Ivory then pins Debra, and Ivory becomes the new WWF Women's Champion. Looks like Nicole Bass has aligned herself with Ivory, while Debra is stuck with a dude who effectively cost her her Women's Championship. We then have the blind date match where Test has to wear a blindfold and the boss man's free to do whatever he wants. Sounds kinda kinky. Speaking of kinky, Tess said on Sunday Night Heat that he didn't <coughs> kiss Stephanie goodnight during their date. So we're dealing with a real motherfucking gentleman right here, folks. A man with morals and, uh, what do you call that other thing? Uh, yeah, respect, that's it. Boss man's like respect this as he smacks Tess in the face, and what we get here is the big man throwing punches at thin air while boss man has a little fun. Tess does manage to locate his opponent and Bossman takes a few punches, so Bossman decides to use his nightstick and he gets himself disqualified. Imagine getting yourself disqualified while your opponent's blindfolded. Stephanie McMahon runs down to save Tess, she puts herself in harm's way to save her new man, so Bossman leaves while Tess plans on showing Stephanie some more of that respect later on. Know what I'm saying? 
Kevin Nash cuts a promo next on Nitro. On Raw, it's X-Pac vs Big Show and Jeff Jarrett vs Ken Shamrock. Big Kev looks directly at Sable before stepping into the ring, and the big man wonders what Randy Savage is smoking because the macho man didn't win the main event last night at the Great American Bash. Nash thinks Savage should see a few dudes in white coats when the show's over tonight. The cameras focus on Sable again as Kev calls out Sid. Kevin says he doesn't care where Sid's been over the past two years, Sid's in the building tonight, and Kev says he'll give the big man a world title shot in the main event if he's got the guts to step into the ring. Sid appears on the big screen and he says Kev just made the biggest mistake of his life. He invited the devil to dance tonight, and Sid accepts this invitation to come down to the ring and take what's his. Sid vs Nash is our scheduled main event for Nitro tonight. On Raw, The Big Show tells X-Pac he doesn't want to wrestle him, he's willing to forfeit the match and walk away, but Pac says the match is booked and it wouldn't be the first time he's got his ass kicked anyway. The kid wants to be a man and so he throws a kick at The Big Show, and Show just tosses X-Pac over the top rope like a piece of garbage. Kane then walks down the rampway and The Big Red Machine stops X-Pac from getting back in the ring. Kane wants to take Pac's place, and when Waltman tries to stop his tag team partner from providing this unwanted help, he ends up getting smacked in the face. Kane then sets off his pyro, we think we're gonna see Big Show vs Kane, but Pac hits his tag team partner with a spinning back kick and he also sends Big Show out of the ring with a jump heel kick. Gotta be careful with my kicks here or Eric Bischoff might have an aneurysm, kick or be kicking. Big Show decides it's not worth it, Kane and X Pac argue, and Raw moves on to its next match. The bouts tonight on Raw have been downright terrible, especially for those who aren't in the gimmicky matchups. Shamrock's in his straight jacket and he can only use his legs to fend off Double J. Jarrett's extremely careful when approaching Ken, yet he still ends up getting grapevined and it actually looks like Jarrett's in trouble. Ken's almost able to apply a triangle choke but Jarrett makes it to the ropes. Ken's also able to do some damage from a drop toe hold, and it seems to take Double J a little time to realize that he's wrestling someone in a straight jacket. This should be easy but Ken's making it very difficult. Shamrock takes a few kicks and Jarrett's able to drop an elbow and Ken gets draped over the apron, but Ken runs at Jeff with a shoulder block and he follows this up with a jumping leg lariat. Ken then chokes Jarrett out with a head scissor submission and Double J tops out. I don't know who Jarrett annoyed backstage, but he just got beat by a man who couldn't use his arms, and he also looked dumb after costing his valet the women's championship. Tim White tries to free Shamrock, saying his Kenny boy won't let go of that hold, but Vince McMahon runs down and he takes the key away from the referee. McMahon runs back through the curtain while Ken freaks out, and Raw moves on to its next matchup. A GTV segment airs on Raw. Billy Gunn's getting his rear end shaved, and the unfortunate poor woman notices that Billy's got a big old zit on his ass. Billy says this has to be kept a secret, and if it ever gets out, this lady will never have the pleasure of shaving Billy's butt again. Absolutely wild. On Raw, we've got Patterson and Briscoe vs Midian and Viscera. On Nitro, Flair, Piper, DDP and Canyon take on Malenko, Benoit, Bagwell and Saturn. The Raw match is another non-starter. The Stooges get in the ring while Midian and Viscera stand on the entranceway, and then Pat Patterson and Briscoe get attacked by the Main Street Posse. You ever had sex? I haven't felt great. Yeah. It felt so good when I did it with my penis. Yeah. A girl let me do it. It literally just happened. Yeah. Having sex can make a nice man out the meanest. Oh, hey. Bit weird that Midian and Viscera would need backup in this match, but I guess Patterson and Briscoe were just too much for them. Viscera splashes all over the Stooges, and the posse walk away happy with getting a little payback for last week. And this real lack of wrestling on Raw this week's making it look like an easy victory for WCW Nitro. I said on the last episode I can never see Nitro winning again, but here we are. So we've got all the guys who complained about not getting a break going up against Piper, Flair, DDP and Canyon. The match breaks down after Ric Flair takes a ton of chops, followed by a suplex. Benoit catches DDP out for a crossface attempt, and the heels decide to go to the outside and regroup. When the match resumes, we've got Buff Bagwell and Roddy Piper going to work and Buff Daddy goes in control. The Hot Rod feeds well for the babyface team after taking a few punches, and the Hot Rod asks for a timeout following an inverted atomic drop. When we come back from commercial break, we've got Benoit and Flair in the ring once again. The two roll around on the mat while trying to pin each other, but neither man's successful and Benoit ends up taking a back suplex. This gets answered with an enziguri and fans get treated to the flare flop. 
Benoit then applies the figure 4, this gets followed up by Saturn applying a figure 4 to Paige, Malenko then puts a figure 4 on Kenyon, and finally Buff Daddy applies the same move to Roddy Piper. The crowd popped huge for this spot, but it gets broken up pretty quickly by Bam Bam Bigelow. It's a mess in the ring right now as the guys begin heading back to their corners, and we continue on with Kenyon performing his top rope famouser on Chris Benoit. DDP and Roddy Piper go to work on Chris before Flair tags back in. Benoit takes a low blow and the heel team are now taking advantage of the referee getting distracted. Chris has to fight out of the heel corner while Kenyon comes back in, but DDP's right there with a big lariat and Chris now needs to tag out. The heel team tag in and out quickly and Benoit is seemingly done for, but he manages to kick DDP in the face when Dallas goes for a top rope attack and it's Buff Bagwell who comes in with all the fire. Buff Daddy cleans house and when things get a little shaky his teammates come in to help, the match breaks down for a final time and we get guys fighting both in and around the ring, but it's Bagwell who emerges the hero of the match when he puts Flair away with a blockbuster. The reaction he gets is undeniable here and this was easily the best match of the week so far. The commentators called this Buff Bagwell's biggest victory ever, so let's see if WCW capitalize on this newfound momentum next week. Kane takes on the Acolytes next on Raw, on Nitro, Hack battles Rick Steiner in a hardcore match. Kane shows no fear while fighting the Acolytes on the rampway and he almost ends it early by chokeslamming Farouk inside the ring. Bradshaw is quick to help his partner out though and Farouk tags out afterwards. Bradshaw takes a sidewalk slam followed by a top rope clothesline and we then go to the outside where Kane briefly remains in control. A clothesline from hell puts the big red machine on the floor though and the Acolytes work together to throw Kane into the ring steps. Back in the ring we see a double suplex from the tag team champions, but when Bradshaw goes for another clothesline he ends up getting caught out with a choke slam. Farouk dashes in to save his partner and Bradshaw decides to go outside to grab a steel chair. Kane takes a shot across the back and a shot to the head and the Acolytes pick up a victory after a back suplex neckbreaker combination. X-Pac shows up afterwards and the champs get out of the ring, so it appears that there's no ill will between Kid and the big red machine. In the dressing room, Shamrock's broken free from his straitjacket and he now has a tough decision to make. Does he go after Vince McMahon and get a little payback for last week, or does he take the piss he's been holding in for the last 20 minutes? On Nitro, I'm glad to see Hack face someone different in a hardcore match and hey, this could be pretty good if these two are allowed to go all out. Rick lays in the stiff punches right at the opening bell and a few chair shots to the head leaves Sam, I mean Hack, a little dazed. It doesn't take long for both men to end up on the rampway with Rick staying firmly in control and Rick's even out here punching security men. The two head to the back and Hack continues to get annihilated. He gets thrown into some rails, he gets thrown into a ladder, the two fight on top of a truck and when Hack finally stuns Rick he decides to beat the crap out of a motorbike instead of beating the crap out of his opponent. Makes perfect sense. The two continue to fight among the vehicles, also using a black hummer to do some damage, yeah we need to distinguish black hummers from white hummers now, and Eric Bischoff almost cries when the tailpipe comes off the Harley. It all ends when Hack gets thrown through the roof of the black hummer and then Sting emerges instead of hardcore Hack. Sting attacks Rick as the crowd goes nuts, the icon brings Rick out to the entranceway where he smacks him again with his baseball bat and then the stinger walks down to the ring to cut a promo. Sting wonders who's afraid of the big black bat, he asks what's black and brown and looks good on Sting. Um, shit? No, it's a Doberman. He then asks what's black and white and looks good on Rick Steiner, and the answer is Sting. Yeah, Sting. The icon then heads back up the ramp to do some more damage with his trusty baseball bat. Sting's very animated tonight, he's a little unhinged, and it all ends with Rick getting carried to the back by the Stinger himself. Mr. McMahon cuts a promo next on Raw while WCW presents La Parka in Psychosis vs Rey Mysterio and Conan. We go back to WWF headquarters where we see all of McMahon's awards, plaques and general knickknacks that make Vince feel very good about himself. Not gonna lie, I want those framed WWF albums, the rest of the stuff I don't care about. By the way, those albums should really be in Jim Johnson's studio. Austin says Vince needs a bit more bullshit in this building because he's seen so much of it today he might as well be swimming in it. So Austin opens the doors to Vince's office and his team of workmen begin dumping bull dung all over the place. Not the first time that office has seen some absolute filth I'm sure. 
Vin sees this all happen while watching a monitor backstage, so he and Shane head to the ring while Stone Cold pours beer all over his big pile of doo doo. Vince gets in the ring and he says Austin's disgraced the WWF, <coughs> and Vince will not forget nor forgive what Austin has done. McMahon wants his office back, he wants full ownership of WWF, so McMahon has a challenge for Stone Cold. At King of the Ring, Vince and Shane will put up their stock in the company against Stone Cold stock. The paperwork will be hung above the ring, and the only way to grab that paperwork is to use a ladder. It's an all or nothing 2 on 1 ladder match, and it's going to happen at King of the Ring. Shane was just about to announce the stipulation for Rock's match later on, but then the McMahons get interrupted by Ken Shamrock. The world's most dangerous man hits Shane with a belly to belly while Vince McMahon runs for his life back up the rampway. The King of the Ring pay per view is shaping up quite nicely, and we'll find out in just a moment if The Rock's going to get a title shot at the pay per view. On Nitro, Master Percy and his band of merry men bring Conan and Rey Mysterio to the ring. This tag team will now officially be known as the No Limit Soldiers, and it looks like Rey and K Dog are completely embracing this new change. In the ring, the action remains the exact same, which isn't a bad thing either. It's particularly good seeing Conan wrestling cruiserweights again, and it goes to show how good K Dog really was. He could adapt to any wrestling style, and he doesn't look out of place wrestling heavyweights or cruiserweights. Eric Bischoff talks about the debut of Nitro here and how WCW changed the world. As Conan and Ray throw themselves at their opponents, Bischoff also says the NWO is one of the most copied factions in all of pro wrestling. Kinda rich seeing as Bischoff copied the NWO concept himself, but nonetheless, our match ends with a K Factor from Conan and a springboard Hurricane Rana from Rey Mysterio. The No Limit Soldiers then celebrate in the ring, but their theme music gets cut off and we hear rap is crap, the full version with Kurt's vocals. That means I can finally play this. I like country music, I love country girls, I like Willie Nelson, and don't forget about Merle. There's only one thing that I hate, cause it's a bunch of crap, I, I hate rap. Yeah, I had that one in the back pocket for quite some time. Kurt, Bobby D and Barry Windham have taken over the DJ booth, but they quickly escape when Master P starts running up the entranceway. Now, herein lies the problem. The crowd start booing the No Limit Soldiers when Percy runs down country music. He asks people if they like rap music and they boo even louder. So WCW have a pretty big problem here. Seems like the fans of WCW don't care much for the No Limit Soldiers, and a lot of fans share Kurt's sentiments about rap music. To be fair, Master P is acting like a knobhead here, so that might have something to do with it too. Main event time, The Rock vs Undertaker on Raw, Sid Vicious vs Kevin Nash on Nitro. The Rock and Undertaker make their entrances, and then Triple H shows up on the entranceway. Hunter reveals that he's the stipulation Shane was about to announce moments ago, and this is now a triple threat match. If Rock wants a title shot, he has to get through both men. So it's pretty much a 2 on 1 match here, and Rock's only going to get a chance if one of his opponents screw up or if they turn on each other. We quickly go to the outside where Rock gets destroyed at the commentary table. When it gets back in the ring, Triple H and the WWF champ take turns at punching Rock in the face. We go to the opposite corner where Taker lays in more punches while Hunter opts for some knee strikes. In the first person to make mistakes, Triple H, though he quickly makes up for this little mishap. The members of the corporate ministry take turns at choking the people's champ out, and again, it's Triple Triple H who provides Rock with an opening. Rock hits a swinging neckbreaker, but Undertaker is right there to take Rock down with an uppercut. We then go to the entranceway where Rock almost punches Undertaker off the stage, but Triple H saves his teammate. He gets paid back by getting thrown into a steel gutter set up beside the curtain, but no matter what Rock does here, he simply can't build any momentum at all. China and Paul Bear watch on as their guys continue to destroy Rocky, but then The Undertaker just stands there while Rocky hits a low blow on Hunter and Rock fires up as he and Taker head back down to the ramp. Undertaker is quick to regain control, and when the match gets back in the ring, it's Rock taking more right hands while Triple H continues to get used for Rock's short lived comebacks. Hunter then messes up when he hits the ropes while The Undertaker performs old school. Taker leaves the ring while Triple H goes for a pedigree. Rock counters it and the ref takes a bump, and The Undertaker saves Hunter from taking a rock bottom. 
Rock gets chokeslam, Taker signals for the tombstone, Rock counters it and Taker bumps into Triple H. With Hunter out of the ring, Rock's able to hit the rock bottom and the people's elbow, and when a second referee hits the ring, China quickly pulls him back out again. Our match ends when China inadvertently trips up The Undertaker. The champ gets clotheslined to the outside and he grabs China by the throat. This leads to Hunter grabbing the WWF Champion and Taker snaps Hunter's neck across the top rope. Rock wins the match after delivering a rock bottom to Triple H. The Undertaker's angry, Triple H is angry, the two start throwing right hands as the corporate ministry begins to crumble before our very eyes, and Raw goes off the air with the rest of the faction trying to keep the two men apart. The match itself wasn't good, but the ending was very interesting. There's many ways the WWF can go with this and it creates some intrigue for next week. Kevin Nash is wearing a pretty interesting tie-dye NWO shirt. He's expecting Sid to walk down to the ring, but instead he gets Macho Man Randy Savage. We aren't getting our main event here, are we? Savage wants Kevin to hand over the world belt because everyone knows Savage beat Nash last night at the pay per view. Nash says Randy's delusional, he can try to take the belt off him if he wants to, so Kev drops the belt on the mat and he hits Randy with a big forearm shot. The bell rings, so I'm guessing we're going to see Kevin vs Macho Man. I have no idea what's going on, but Gorgeous George provides a distraction and this allows Savage to low blow Nash. Miss Madness goes for a missile dropkick but she ends up hitting Macho. Kev then stops a kick from Medusa as Big Sid dashes down to the ring. Nash tries his best to fight off both men, but he's unable to do so, and the referee calls for the bell as Sid and Savage begin their beatdown on Big Sexy. The crowd chants for Goldberg, but Billy Boy ain't here tonight. Just when it seems all hope's been lost, the man called Sting hits the ring, the crowd pop as Sting helps Nash take these two chumps out, and Nitro ends with Savage and Sid backing off while Nash and Sting stand in the ring. This wasn't even a main event match, fans who expected Sid vs Nash would have been very, very disappointed. I didn't think I'd ever say it again, but Nitro wins reliving the war this week. The matches on Raw were god awful, and if you ever want to see what an overbooked WWF show looks like, look no further than this episode of Raw. The Stone Cold stuff was good, the rest really wasn't for me. Gimmick, short matches and non finishes completely took over the broadcast, and a vast majority of it wasn't all that entertaining, whereas Nitro put on solid bouts including the 8 man tag and the cruiserweight tag match. We have seen better episodes of Nitro by the way, but we have also seen way worse. Raw's on 97 points, Nitro's on 72, and we have now got 19 ties on the board. In the TV ratings, Raw scored a 6.7, Nitro got a 3.3. It's the King of the Ring Go Home episode of Raw next week and the Heartbreak Kid's back in the war zone. Edge gets a match against number one contender The Rock, and Stone Cold Steve Austin's also in action. On Nitro, Macho Man Randy Savage and Sid go on a rampage, Buff Bagwell gets another opportunity when he comes face to face with Roddy Piper and Ric Flair, and the legendary Eddie Guerrero returns the in-ring action. Thank you so much for watching Reliving the War. Remember, shirt sales at chinlocks.com are still getting 100% donated to the Owen Hart Foundation throughout March, so if you want to pick one up, now is a great time to do so. I hope to see you all again next week guys, please take care.